Hi, hey, so in this example, we are solving for the indicated subject. You do this a lot of the times in science. And um, yeah, so I don't know, R is buried deep in there, inside some brackets. Uh, we got to think about how to get it. There are two different ways. What are those strategies? Well, you could try, uh, think of this as V is equal to one third times pi, pi h squared times three r minus h. So divide both sides by this, mm -hmm. or multiply by 3, and divide by pi, and divide by h squared to get rid of this front part first, and then add h and divide by 3. Okay. Let's or, yeah. mm -hmm. we could distribute this 1 third pi h squared into the bracket, and then try to solve for r that way. Cool. Let's see if one turns out easier than the other. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. So, first, let's uh, try to get rid of this part. So there's a one third there, so I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So I get three v is equal to pi h squared three r minus h, and I'm going to divide both sides by pi h squared. You don't need the brackets here, but I'm going to leave that on there. Okay. Now what can I do? Our goal, our goal is always to get for the r. So now, over on the right hand side, we have a subtract h. So let's add h to both sides. Okay. We're nearly home free. We've almost got r on its own. We have one more step, and that is just to divide by three or multiply by one third. Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to put a bracket around here and multiply both sides by one third. That's e much easier putting those brackets in to recognize it distributes to both things. And also, dividing by three on that first term is not so easy to see. But on the, on the second term, h over three is fine. Mm -hmm. But this helps with that first messy term. And you can see the threes cancel when you distribute the one-third into the first term, and we're home free. You weren't happy with your R there? No, it was just off to the side. Still looked better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's try it a different way. Okay, so the second technique Mr. Song brought up was to first distribute. That's all right, you can see it. So if we first distribute through, then again, you've got one third of three, those numbers will cancel. Good. And we're, our goal, remembering always our goal is the R, right? So we're subtracting something from it. The inverse of subtracting is adding. So we can add one third pi h squared to both sides. Oh, one third pi h cubed, sorry, mm -hmm. not squared. And next? We can divide both sides by pi h squared. Mm -hmm. So if we use the same strategy as before, mm -hmm. you divide by pi h squared to get a r on its own, and that's the same as multiplying by one over pi h squared. And the nice thing about this is you can easily see when it distributes to both terms on the left hand side that we end up with v over pi h squared. And here on the bottom or on the on the um, numerator you have a pi, on the denominator you have a pi, those will cancel. Then on the numerator you have h cubed and the denominator h squared. So one of those h's will exist on the numerator and not the denominator. And the 3 from the 1 third stays in the denominator. And we get v over pi h squared plus h over 3 equals r. And we've isolated r. If we go back and have a look at our previous answer, h over 3, v over pi h squared. So both answers got to the same place in roughly the same amount of work. Let's see, one line, 
two lines, three lines, and up above, but that second to third line was tricky. Here you have four lines, all similar, right? Yeah. So I just make sure that you're choosing the inverse order of operations to unwrap and isolate R. Um, you were going to say something? No, I, I thought this was uh, somehow easier mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, adding the H was a nice step, yeah. right? So the, the, it cleaned up. The fraction stayed a little bit cleaner. I agree. Cool. That right-hand side num, um, in this case, this would be an unfamiliar, right? But we'll show you some, some tricky ones here as well. And uh, you've got Y buried in all kinds of different places. So how, what are we going to start with? There and there. So uh, because Y is in the bracket and I can't really um, pull it out, so to speak, so I'm going to distribute. Okay, so if we expand everything with the goal of isolating Y, it's going to look messier, but you'll see why this step helps us out in the long run. It's a long line, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now let's highlight everything that's got a Y in it. And if our whole goal is to get Y by itself, oh, I see some stuff already here. We're going to need to bring Y's all over to the same side. Mm -hmm. But th what's really nice about this is when we're collecting those, if you have the same thing on both sides of an equation, what can you do with them? You can divide them? No, you can cancel them out. You subtract by from each side, uh -huh. they're going to disappear. Oh, I thought you were talking about the two. Ah, yeah, two I'm messing happening. with your head here. I'm not giving you good questions. So by and by will disappear. At the same time, you also recognize a minus 2a on both sides. So if we add 2a, and suddenly that expansion, although the first line after expanding looked messier, very quickly we recognize that it's a much shorter, easier to deal with expression. So now I'm going to add both sides by ay. Excellent. So we get 2ay here. And add 2b to both sides. Because our goal, all together, what we're trying to do is get y by itself, get y by itself, but get y by itself. One final step. OK, and then divide by 2a. Inverse of multiplies divides. So we divide that out. We're left with y equals Oh, this is nice. 4 over 2. All right. Number over number becomes wonderful. So even though it was a level 7, 8, and the previous one was a level 5, 6, this all stayed on one line, 